Hey guys, and welcome back to another unfiltered gamer, musically inclined, board game review. And today's game up on the tabletop is called Vinyl Jukebox. This one here plays two players, but I believe there's a combination strategy they're going for on the Kickstarter that will let you play more players. You'll have to check it out to, to see. But in this game here, you're putting coins into this machine to gather out 45s, which then you'll use to place into your jukebox. And you'll be building this 3x3 three three grid, all while at the same time pushing your luck, attempting to play your coins in and gather the appropriate type of genre as well as decade and whether it's the A side or the B side of the 45 in attempts to satisfy your objective as well as the main objectives on the board and so you're going to be basically saying okay I need to have three A sides matching which will score me this amount of points and three B sides or maybe country music or jazz as well as of course your secret objective cards that say I want you to have jazz up here country down here and the blues right in the middle and you can score pint points in different combinations You'll be going back and forth, utilizing your little bag of coins here to score as many points as you can by the time somebody finishes their 3x3 three three grid, which everybody takes their own turn, and whoever has the most points wins the game vinyl. Let's take a look down below, and I'll show you what the game comes with, how to play it a bit, and then we'll come up and discuss my review. Here we have the game Vinyl by Talon Strike Studios, and as you can see, it's fully set up for two players. Each player is going to have their own unique bag, which is going to have 10 coins that is going to range from the decade A, B, as as well as the genres. So there should be five of the different genres, as well as two A's, two B's, and a 40s, 50s, and 60s chip that you'll place inside here. These are what you're gonna be using to place into your little uh, insert coin areas here. Everybody's going to get three objective cards. You'll choose two of them and you'll put the other one back. And at the end of the game, you're going to select one of them to score from. So you can go and try and basically just determine which one's going to be best for you throughout the game. And that'll let you score bonus points. You can hide these and don't show them to anybody else but yourself. And obviously check on them throughout the game. Place your player board in front of you. You'll have the two different rows, which you're going to be placing your coins in, as well as all the information you need to know about what you do on your turn. Turn, what you can do on somebody else's turn, and where all your expended coins go. Then go ahead and take the 45s, which are the records here, shuffle up the deck and deal out a 3x3 three three grid. This is the open area where players can go ahead and gather them to place into their own 3x3 three three grid that they'll be making throughout the game. Additionally, you're going to have extra tokens that will count as not only decade, but also genre, and you can mix and match them, and you can stack them on top of the coins you'll be putting in here with your main bag, and then you'll also have an extra A and a B. Then, over here, you're going to basically be getting three of each of these color score tokens, and you're going to randomly select two of them for each of the different genres, A and B, as well as Decade. Remove the rest of them, you won't be using them for the game, and then place these extra rival tokens on top. And the way these guys work is whenever you form a row or a column on your own jukebox, you're basically going to be taking one of these guys and putting it into your rival's bag as well as removing one of yours from your coin box uh, from the game which will allow you to kind of mix and match how things are going to go. Now, that's pretty much the setup for the game. Everybody's got everything in front of them. All you need to know is to decide who last spent coins into a machine, and thusly you'll begin by taking one of the two actions in the game. Action 1, insert coins. Action 2, empty coin box. To insert coins, it's pretty simple. You'll be basically pushing your luck, kind of like Quacks of Quedlingburg, where you'll be taking out coins from a bag and placing them down in these rows here. And as you place them, hopefully you're going to be able to match in the rows up to one of these things here. So for instance, this is a 60s uh, A side with either country or with rock. And you'll look and see, do I have any countries, 60s and rock? And I do. I can then go ahead and take those tokens and I can gain one of these guys here. That's one way that the turn can look, which is actually good because you can use these for your three by three. Once you place, it's placed forever, but you have to make a three by three grid. Another thing to note too, is as you're placing, you can choose to do it in either row, as well as when you place into one row with these little diamonds here, your opponent can go ahead and place on theirs. So they get a free placement if you go and push farther than the second area. 
another thing to note is another way that this is going to end is when one or mo more rows get covered. So for instance, if I were to continue to place and I unfortunately couldn't actually gather any of these 45s here, like they were not accessible for these two rows, then these are all going to get exhausted. I'll get to then gather two of these special tokens and put them in my bag. And all of these are going to go to my coin box. Whenever you get exhausted or you spend these to gather the 45s, they'll go into your coin box. And that leads me to emptying your coin box. So on your turn, if you can't insert coins because either A, your bag ran out, or B, you're basically fully exhausted, uh, then you're going to go ahead and take all of these coins and you're going to go ahead and put them in your bag. Additionally, you'll go ahead and select two bonus tokens and put them in, and your opponents will actually take one coin from their coin box and place it into their bag, thusly allowing them to gather certain tokens and whatnot as they're trying to get these specific ones here. Because as you see, each of them requires three specific coins, and they must be in one of the two rows, and when you take them, it has to just be the specific ones that, uh, uh, that pertain to these. Another thing to note is some interesting things. This one here is a is kind of a wild. You can either have it be country or the 60s. And when taking coins out of the bag, if you run into something like the 60s or a country token and you don't want to actually put it here, you can actually put it on top. So there's little stackable rules as far as these guys go. And that's pretty much it. There's only two actions in the game. Like I said, inserting coins or taking coins and emptying them from the coin box here. Whenever somebody inserts a coin here on their turn, you'll be able to place on yours. And whenever somebody empties their coin box, they'll be able to, you'll be able to return one. And the other thing, the last thing that's to note is how these things function here. So for instance, let's just say that this player here had built something like this. When he places this one here, so he's made his fifth 45, he's then going to check and see what he's going to be able to score here. And as you can see, he's got two 50s and two A's. So we'll look and see, this is three A's, this is one A, uh, here's two 50s. So he can take this and score that row there. Scoring the row is going to give him six points at the end of the game, and if he has a 50s or when he gets one in his coin box, he'll place that token onto here, thusly removing coins from his box and his bag to uh, change up how the game is going to function. As well as if it's the first one of that category, whether it's decade, genre, or A and B side, then that coin, that rival coin, will go into the opponent's bag here, thusly giving them that coin and changing things up. And the game is going to continue, like I said, until eventually when you see here these things fill up, you'll check this one here. That's two A's. So I guess I can actually take this one here or two 60s. That's even better. So two 60s and this would go into my opponent's bag. And as you see, these will suddenly start ramping up. And when they do ramp up, you're going to be filling all of these in. And eventually all these will get filled with points. And when that happens, that triggers the end of the game, in which everybody will get equal turns. After that, you're going to flip over these two cards here and you're going to score based on all the points here illustrated for the rows and columns. And you're going to choose one of these to score. And you'll score in two different ways. The first way you'll score is two, four, or nine points, depending on if you got these in a row. And in this case, I got the boots here. I got the trumpet here, but I did not get the microphone here. So I'm going to score instead of two, I'll score four points. If I had the trumpet or if I had the microphone there, I'd score nine. Uh, and then down here, for every 50s, 45, I'm going to score one point. And for every B side, I'm going to score one point. And if they're both on the same 45, I'll score three. So in this case, I'm going to score three. I'm going to score six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 points. So I'd score 11 points here. I'd score four here for 15. And then I would calculate all of the ones that would be down here. And that'd be my total score. And I would check my opponents and they would have their total. And whoever had the most points in this game is the winner of the jukebox. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward as to how it plays. Let's talk about the strategy and some other interesting things about this game. So let's talk about Jukebox. And basically this game does feel like you're attempting to gather 45s and put them into a Jukebox. You have this tableau management aspect as well as you're pushing your luck by pulling coins out of a bag. It feels a little like Quacks along with a couple other tableau style games attached to it with unique aspects as for how you're going to be gathering points from rows and columns while you're placing down these specific genres from these specific decades. Now of course, depending on 
determine where you choose to place your coins is going to determine what you get. And you're going to want specific things based on your objective cards. And you'll get more than one, so you can kind of go based off of which one you think you're going to score the most of. And you might switch back and forth throughout the game, depending on what is available to you. Now, the beginning of the game comes with a little bit more luck, because you might start off a little slower than somebody else, and they might pick up faster. However, as the game progresses, you're going to eventually be pulling your coins back and gathering these unique coins that let you stack and whatnot. And this is the catch-up mechanic that kind of pushes you along throughout the game and allows you to kind of be more varied in your choices as to what jukebox or what vinyls you want, right? And so as you go along collecting those, you're trying to formulate the best amount of points that you can get. And you have to look at the objectives too, because some of them may be available, they might not be. If you have three A's, but there's only an objective for two A's, that's the highest that you can score. Maybe you should have went for three Bs. That was worth 10 points as opposed to the seven you got for A's because you didn't think about it. So you have to be kind of aware. There's a lot of thoughts going on in my head when I play this game. I want to think, where do I want to place this? Where do I want to place that? And how do I want to place it? And along with, what do I have in my bag? I know what's in there based on what I've placed in there, but can I gather it? And what I'm trying to go for on the field is going to be based on the coins that are in my bag. So if I don't have them in my bag, I know I can't get it. So on my turn, I might actually just have to pull and put back into my bag so that I can eventually get what I need. But that slows you down and other players were going to pass you up if you're not careful. If you start pulling back too much, or if you are not gathering enough these coins, or you place too many out, other players are going to benefit from your slowness. You're wanting a very specific types of 45s, and in which case they're going to speed ahead of you. Now, that's basically your fault. However, that can still work out well for you if you pick the right things and put all the right placement down. It can score you a ton of points at the cost of somebody else probably finishing the game a little quicker than you. There is a lot of deducing as well as structuring how you want things to go. And for me, this game made me like, uh, uh, my thinking cap was constantly on. It's a bit of a puzzler. And it's definitely something that if you're really thinking ahead of time and realizing what you have in your bag, you're going to do very well for this game. My only little negatives are going to be that the game does have luck involved. Somebody can speed ahead of you if you start pulling back too soon, or if you don't actually get the coins that you want in the rows that you want, which can just happen on the occasion, just like how quacks, you can pull things you don't want. But the ability to mitigate that does definitely help. Also, it is a puzzler, so it makes my brain work really hard. So I'm playing with everybody else, and they're definitely stomping me as this game goes on, because they know what's going on, and I'm just like, okay, I, I kind of remember what's in my bag. I know that I've got two A's, two B's, one of each of the genres and three of each and one of each of the decades, but uh, do I have this and what special coin? Did I get any of these unique coins? I think I did. Okay, let me pull again. Ah, you know, and so it has that like bit of, of strategic like mind thumpery. <laughs> that's that's a word, by the way, mind thumpery. It's how it, that's how my brain functions when I try and play games like these. And so I don't do very well usually when it comes to playing these games. But overall, I really enjoyed this game. It's definitely one I like to play more of, but you have to go ahead and check out yourself to see. Overall, a fun little game, something that you definitely should check out if you like all the different mechanics attached to it. Let me know what you think down below. Link in the description as well as in the comments. Tell me what you think about the game Vinyl Jukebox and Town me i'll go ahead and uh, check out the campaign with you all right outro time all right guys thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review for the game final jukebox if you're interested like i said link down below in the description go ahead and tell me what you think about this game uh it's a very interesting theme i have not seen a lot of music games and this one does a very good job of it as in fact uh, i think ferdinand's gonna really enjoy this one also check out unfilteredgamer.com it's gonna be new updated soon by the time you see this video maybe or maybe in the next week or so uh we're gonna have some new stuff giveaways and all kinds of new content from other people other than just my Myself. And speaking of myself, we're going to be doing a live stream every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST. Join us on Facebook. We stream games just like this one, and you can see us playing these games. A lot of fun. Join the community as well as join our Discord and Patreon if you want as well. It does help us out. We do greatly appreciate it. But nevertheless, if you at least subscribe and push that bell button notification, we really appreciate it. It's what keeps us going and doing more of these videos, the Cali's Corner videos, all the updates, all the giveaways, and all the live streams put out. Just more stuff from you from the community makes us want to kind of reach out and do more things for you guys all right thank you so much for watching and as always i enjoy putting together or i will enjoy putting together some vinyl 45s in your jukebox and my jukebox with you next time musical outro